All right, so there's this interesting post by Fred DeBeis. 1958 Encyclopedia Britannica book talks about Antarctica in a dome that's 13,000 feet high. Must watch. So we play this video. Antarctica. Remember how I showed you the maps that were here on Earth before 1958, before the governments took them out? Now I'm going to show you the Encyclopedia Britannica's in the public libraries before 1958. Here is volume two out of the alphabet A. And we're going to flip to the Antarctica, which, and this is from 1958, as you can see. Okay, 1958. Now, we're going to flip to the Antarctica and see what the Encyclopedia Britannica from 1958 before the Antarctic Treaty says is there. Okay, and before he reads this, we're going to go to an Encyclopedia entry. So this is for not the Encyclopedia Britannica, but the Encyclopedia Americana which is the actual name of the encyclopedia he's reading. But the entry I'm going to go to is date 1922. So under the section titled Antarctic Regions, we're given a walkthrough of exploration in a region, going in chronological order, starting as far back as 1769. This section ends in April 1916. With this sentence, late in 1916, however, a message from the ship was picked up in New Zealand, whence relief was promptly dispatched on 27th. Then it goes to the next section, Antarctic Ocean. For this video, he's reading an edition that's from 1958, so we'll continue. Now, you won't find this in the new encyclopedias because the government's banned them. But what I want you to notice right here is notice how it says the flights proved inland areas to be featureless in character with a dome 13,000 feet high at about latitude 80 degrees south longitude 90 degrees east take a really really close look at that now I'm going to zoom it in for you when they so a very important sentence seemingly that gives reference to a dome and this speaks to the concept that the Earth somehow looks like this with Antarctica in the periphery and the dome appearing at the edge there, encircling. Now for the oddities of this clip. So just to confirm, the narrator says it's Encyclopedia Britannica. When you actually look at the edition, it's actually Encyclopedia Americana. So I'm going to replay that part. Now I'm going to show you the Encyclopedia Britannica's in the public libraries before 1958. Here is volume two out of the alphabet A. Now is this a mistake that you make narrating a video? It clearly says Americana on the cover and on the page you turn to, but you say Britannica. That came off as very strange to me. So then I did some searching. I googled the term dome and I came across this article. Where's the best site on earth? Domes A, B, C, F, and ridges A and B. And to my surprise, I came across this article. This article describes the topography of Antarctica with various potential sites A, B, C, and F and other Antarctic bases. Then there's discussion of Dome A, extended plateau. Dome F is a sharper peak. Dome C and Ridge B are nearly level ridges. Someone document clouded an excerpt from the 1958 edition of Encyclopedia Americana covering that section the person read to you. Now remember how in the 1922 edition I showed you that the following section was Antarctic Ocean after it gave a last date in a narrative of 1917. So here in the 1958 edition we have that same thing but the last date given is 1952. So this is an earlier date in 1958. What date did the individual narrating the video give us? Okay so I paused at 106 in the video of the narrator and it may be difficult to appreciate but I'll mark out for you here the date you can see december 20th 1955 in a paragraph before where the narrator is reading therefore it seems there are in fact two 1958 editions one with the narrator section removed and this particular version the narrator is reading now let's listen again to the exact section the narrator reads from flights proved inland areas to be featureless in character with a dome 13,000 feet high at about latitude 80 degrees south longitude 90 degrees east 80 degrees south longitude 90 degrees east so it looks like dome b fits that description dome b is 79 degrees south 93 degrees east and is has a height of 3,809 meters, which is equal to 12,496 feet, or just under 13,000 feet. On a topographic map, 
this is dome A, and then this is dome B right here. So what do I think of this and why did I do this video? It is surprising to me that the Antarctic continent has multiple mountains in very significant elevation of greater than 10,000 feet. It's essentially a continent of mountains in a center with gradually increasing elevation. This is very fascinating to me. What I'm wondering about is the Mandela effect. Was it possible that this narrator was in fact reading the Encyclopedia Britannica in his version of events, but that either CERN or some other agency accomplished a great work which altered the reality, changing it to allow the America Kana to become an encyclopedia that didn't previously exist. It had also altered the words around what he verbally narrated to allow that description to fit the classic description of mountainous dome regions in Antarctica. What I'm trying to tell you, what we're seeing here could possibly be an explanation for why the Mandela effect occurred. If there were inconvenient admissions in history, admissions that can help further define humankind in its relation to the earth and God, it may have been felt necessary to create an edit or an adjustment in the reality field to get rid of the inconvenient evidence. And thus, manipulation could have occurred, changing other aspects of this person's investigation to make it look foolish today. Foolish in the sense that we have domes. Does there exist in reality where there is no Encyclopedia Americana? There's only an Encyclopedia Britannica. And in this reality, a mistake was made in the 1958 edition where important features about the true nature of this world were accidentally revealed. I'm not making any kind of pronouncement on my belief in the shape of this world. I would say by all appearances, things certainly look spherical, but at the same time, I can't forget subject matter covered in this video regarding the mystery of the Fruit of Loom logo. In this video, I demonstrate multiple smoking guns to show that there somehow existed a cornucopia on that brand of underwear. If you can establish the basic fact, you know there are other hidden facts that could further be established with timely clues and a bit of luck. So if the Medill effect is a fact, then other reality alterations of which we haven't completely recorded, including that relating to the actual shape of our reality, it could indeed be facts too. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Peace.